All right, now the endocrine system is about hormones, right? And how hormones uh, work collectively with other body systems to, to maintain the homeostasis in our body. So it's a very important body system. And remember, we talk about the regulation of body functions, right? The nervous system is one of the controlling systems, but the nervous system is the fast acting system. On the other hand, endocrine system is the other controlling system, but it's a slow acting system because it relies on hormones. And it takes time right, for hormones to be transported to all the target organs and tissues and elicit some responses. But endocrine system is absolutely very important. All right, so let's look at a comparison between T6 and T7 in terms of learning objectives. Most of them are pretty much the same. Um, you need to know the structures, you need to know the functions of this particular system, and also the relationship between the two controlling systems, right? How they work together to regulate, body, regulate the body functions. Now, there are two new objectives. Uh, the first one is describe the role of the endocrine system in homeostasis. Even though this is a, a new learning goal, it has been more or less covered in T6 because that's one of the major functions of the endocrine system. But I will go over that um, in, in today's video. And the next one is recognize examples of a positive and negative feedback mechanisms. So this is a very new because in TCSX, there's not any language on the feedback mechanisms. mechanisms. And it's definitely not as specific, right? Because this one says you have to recognize examples of positive and negative feedback. So you may see a specific, say, body function and you have to identify whether it's a positive feedback or a negative feedback. Okay? And these two learning goals are actually related, right? Because the positive and negative feedback mechanisms are part of the homeostasis, right? Especially the negative feedback. That's how the body maintains homeostasis. Okay, let's take a deeper, deeper look at these uh, topics. So this is a very busy slide, but I want to put all the important information here, including some of the examples, some of the specific hormones and what they do. You can um, make a flashcard, you can make a, a concept map, a flow chart that will definitely help you remember. So what is a homeostasis? It's basically a constant internal environment, right? Because in order to make our body function properly, the internal environment cannot change too much. Okay? There's only a small safe range that things can fluctuate. It cannot deviate from that range. Now, how do we maintain this constant stable internal environment? By feedback systems, right? And like I said earlier, primarily negative feedback because the positive feedback really kind of keeps things going farther away from the set point. But negative feedback uh, can pull things back to the set point if it's too far away. Okay? So again, homeostasis is primarily achieved by the negative feedback. All right, now I have some important examples and make sure you know the property that you're trying to regulate for and the hormones that are involved in regulating this process. All right, so there are three examples. The first one is glucose homeostasis, and very important, right? We have a lot of people here in the States that are diabetic and because their body cannot regulate glucose level. So for glucose regulation, we have two main hormones, insulin and glucagon. And remember, these hormones are secreted by the pancreas. So it's not the liver, it's not the pituitary gland, it's the pancreas. So pancreas is the, the most important organ uh, in terms of glucose regulation. Now, what does insulin do? Insulin promotes uptake of, oh, I have a little typo here. I didn't even notice. So this is glucose. Okay, let me go back. Insulin promotes uptake of glucose by cells. So insulin can tell the cells that, you know, the blood has too much glucose and cells, please take in some glucose for your own energy source, right? Because all the cells need to break down glucose to obtain energy. That's their energy source. 
So let's say after you eat, right, things are broken down and glucose levels in the blood are going up. And this is a very good time for the cells to take in glucose and to bring that glucose levels down back to the normal range. There are two purposes, right? First, the cells can get their food to generate energy. And second, a normal level of glucose is important for your health. If there's too much glucose in the blood, um, it can cause some damage long term. So for example, it may damage the nerves, right? A lot of times you see um, posters in, off in doctor's offices, right? It will say, if you're diabetic, please take off your shoes. And that's because the nerves in the feet have been damaged. So patients cannot feel any pain. So if there's any, say, a, a cut on the foot in the skin, the patient cannot feel the pain and consequently check the foot. So if you don't check, the infection could get really bad, right? So that's why um, they need to take off the shoes, take off the shoes so that the doctor can check for any infection on their feet. And another thing is it can be bad for the eyes too. That's why some diabetic patients can go blind. You really want to keep the glucose level at that healthy level. You don't want it to be too high. And waitro hormone brings down the glucose levels, insulin. On the other hand, sometimes when your glucose level is too low in the blood, you want to bring it back up right to the normal level. So who's going to act this time? That's going to be glucagon. So this hormone promotes the release of glucose from the liver. When there's too much glucose, the body stores glucose in the liver for later use, right? For example, if I don't eat my lunch, I could get low blood sugar, right? And in this case, my liver can release glucose into the blood to bring that blood glucose level back up. Okay, so this is uh, what glucagon does. And basically, it increases blood glucose level. So you can see you have uh, two helpers, right, to... Uh, make sure your glucose level is normal in the blood. If it's too high, insulin brings it down. If it's too low, glucagon brings it back up. All right, the next process we're going to look at is water balance. Right? We all know water really well, and we know that water is critical for life. Right? We all need water. So how do we maintain water balance? Sometimes we are dehydrated. But certain times, some people may drink too much water. Now, there are multiple processes right, that can help us balance water. But in this lesson, I'm just going to uh, focus on one of the important hormones that's involved in water balance. And that's antidiuretic hormone. The abbreviation is ADH. So ADH is secreted by the pituitary gland. It stimulates the water reabsorption in the kidneys. Now, if you recall, there are three main steps in urine production, right? First is a filtration, and you should know where it takes place. And then the second and the third, second is a reabsorption. And the third is secretion, and these happen in the renal tubules, the proximal convoluted tubule, and the nephron loop, and the distal convoluted tubule. So the second step, reabsorption, is very important in terms of you know, retaining most of the water, right? Taking back most of the water. Because for, for living things, water can be very important. So you don't you don't want to lose too much water. So uh, ADH specifically works on this reabsorption process of urine production. It can increase the water reabsorption so that your body retains more water. It does not lose as much. And that's why it's called antidiuretic, right? Diuretic means something makes you pee a lot, makes you urinate a lot. If you do urinate a lot, you lose a lot of water. ADH does the opposite. It makes you urinate less often to retain more water. So that's why it's antidiuretic, right? It does the opposite of being diuretic. All right, hopefully this makes sense to you. 
All right, the last process we're going to look at is calcium homeostasis. Now, this process is regulated primarily by two hormones, very important. The first one is parathyroid hormone. So this hormone is secreted by parathyroid glands, which are close to the thyroid gland. Now, this hormone stimulates breakdown of osseous tissue, which is also known as bone tissue. So a lot of calcium is stored in bone in the bone tissue, right? If the tissue is broken down, you can imagine all that calcium is going to be released into the blood, right? So parathyroid hormone increases a blood calcium level. Calcitonin, the second one, that's the opposite. It stimulates storage of calcium in the bone tissue. And this will reduce the blood calcium level, right? Because uh, in order to build the bone tissue to store the calcium in the bone, you have to take calcium away from blood and then put them in the bone tissue. And that's basically what calcitonin does, right? It promotes that process. All right, so those are some examples of the important hormones that are involved in homeostasis in our body. All right, so let's look at the first question. All right, so this is a scenario where Sydney is running a marathon, it's a very hot day, and she is sweating a lot. Which of the following hormones may be secreted in response to the loss of water? So it, it even tells you that she is losing water, right? So what would the body do in this case? The body is going to try to retain water, right, to save all the water possible. So which of the hormones is involved in water balance and it promotes the retention of water? And that's C, right, antidiuretic. So you don't generate a lot of urine, your body is conserving all the water. All right, question two. Which of the following glands is involved in maintaining sugar homeostasis? Sugar homeostasis basically means glucose homeostasis, right? So which organ is involved in that process? Right, that's the pancreas. Now, even though it is an organ, it's also a gland. It secretes a couple of hormones and also, I hope you guys remember this, digestive enzymes, right? It secretes the pancreatic juice, which contains a, a variety of digestive enzymes. So pancreas is indeed a very large secretory gland. So pancreas is pretty awesome. 